job. I'm gonna turn my mourning into a movement. Yes, right. Yeah. I'm gonna turn right. my sorrow into a strategy right. and my bitterness. I'm gonna change that into a battle for justice. We so we know that it is too late for my child. My child is gone. My child is among these names. <laughs> and this, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just all that would fit on three posters. We could fill Atlantic City with the names. We could fill this whole boardwalk with the names that has been taken by unarmed children. It, it, just, it just breaks my heart. When you hear one story, there's a story behind each one of these names. Most of these names you don't know. Start filling up it with their names. They'll, they'll listen. You don't know these names. You know Start filling you it up know with their Sean names. Bell, you know Sean Bell. You know Trayvon Martin. You know Eric Garner. You know Sorry. George Floyd. But these names that's on this poster, we you probably those names. never, never heard of them. Sorry. But I gather with these people and I embrace them. I try to show them courage. There are mothers who can't get out of bed in the morning, who are on strong medication because their child was killed. And some have even tried to commit suicide. Don't make no but sense. we don't look at the other side of the story. We just look at what happens, when it happens, and it's another news story. But to us, it's not another news story. It's our life. Every day, Every we day. have to live with right. this. Don't make no so sense. this is why I can say around the country, to tell people we must encourage, embrace, and we must make this a better world. We, we're not supposed to be afraid to walk down the street. We shouldn't be afraid when a police officer stops us for an ordinary traffic stop. We shouldn't wonder how we're gonna walk away from that stop. It should be just a ticket or whatever, and we, go, and we go on about our business. But it doesn't always end up like that. A lot of times, it's tragic results. So this is why I try to legislate. That's why we demonstrate. They say enough is enough already of the marching. But they're still killing us. So we have to keep on making a statement. We know that marching doesn't solve the problem. But marching brings awareness to the problem. So that's what we have to do, be aware of the problem. So we go from demonstration to legislation. So that's why in New York, my name is on a lot of bills. A lot of things you'll see me in New York on, and a lot of things you don't. But the four bills that recently been passed in New York, my name was on. And one of them was the anti choco bill, the Eric Gardner the anti choco bill. Another one was the Women Aid Bill. All right. We have to stand, we have to have, what we do is when the police officers kill our unarmed children for no reason at all, their records come up. You know they pull our children's record up soon as something happens, and they're the victim. And we never see the police officers' record or do we have any disciplinary charges against him. So now with the 58, we're going to see his record when something is done. His record comes up. And then we got the stat app. We want to know when you killed our children, how old they were, why did you kill them, were they mentally ill, what was their race. We want to know everything about that child or that man or that woman that you murdered and why you murdered them. You know, so we want them to stand accountable. We don't want it swept under the rug. So many of these children's names got swept under the rug. That's why you never heard of it. But it's time to get the dirt from under the rug. So now we are going to stand and we are going to stand with the mothers, the mothers who so, uh, many people don't even know. In New York, if you ever come to my commemoration, you'll see hundreds of mothers that you never even heard about. Because we are forming a club. A club that none of you want to be a But we, we forming a trust bridge between us. And we are going to stand strong. We are going to fight this fight. And we are not going to back down. 
we get knocked down, of course we get, we have to sidestep the problem, because there's plenty of problems. Even though I got laws passed in New York, they're trying to overturn it. They think I don't know, but I read all about that. Before my son was killed, I'm guilty of not knowing a lot about politicians. We got to know who, who's judging, who's the judges, who's in our school system, who's judging our communities. We all think about the big election, oh, we're going to vote for president. That's not what really affects us the most. No, no. Our, our local, com our local uh, elections, Amen. that's what affects you. That's what you got to vote in. Come out and vote. You know that our forefathers, they fought, they were beaten, they were killed for the right to vote. The last of the big six just died a few weeks ago. And we must hold up his name. John Lewis. He fought to his death. He had no fear. I'm sure he had fear, but it didn't stop him. That's why we gotta step out the box, people. Sometimes it's uncomfortable to do what we have to do. But we have to make America uncomfortable because they have made us uncomfortable. We have to make them live up to what we are part of this system. We are part of the American citizen and we deserve the same thing. We are under the same house. We pay the same taxes as the next person. So if we live in the same house, why should you get a cup of milk and I get a cup of milk? So now we want, a, we want our cup of milk. And we're asking for it. Now we're not asking for it, we're demanding it. We have to demand it because this country was built on our backs that we didn't get paid for. And all the, the slave owners, they reap the benefits and pass the money down to their aunts, to their relatives, and calling it old money. It's not old money, it's our money. Right. I like that. You're right. You're right. So I just stand here today, ladies someone. and gentlemen, to still say stealing. Black Lives Matter. But now, Black Lives don't only matter when the police officers shoot us down. Black Lives folks will always matter. Right. In education, in the hospital, when they're mentally ill, it's always supposed to matter. The street violence. We got to stop killing each other, too. Mm, talk about it. They, they're happy when we kill each other. They don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. Get a new mindset. Let's stop killing our own. That's right. Although we know everybody, there's others that kill white people, kill white people, Chinese people who kill Chinese people. They kill people. If you're, if you're a criminal, you're going to kill people where you live. So there's criminals all over, but they do put the spotlight on us. And yep. we have to stop it. Come on now. Yep. Stop killing each other. Talk to your brothers. Talk to your sisters. The guns and the knives is not the answer. It's systematic. It's the, it's the system. All right. Thank you so much. It's the system. Before we conclude, we want to say how did we get to this point? And it was the forces of what you just heard. Saying Black Lives Matter. Like Sister Carr said. It's that loud voice that everyone heard throughout the state when we shut down the land city on the 4th of July. When we marched through the community. And when we said we was coming up here on the boardwalk to paint Black Lives Matter on the world's paper. Why does it take that for them to recognize that we're here and we want to be at the table to help you set it right. That's right. With a black agenda, with the people that are affected the most, the unheard, to be there. Why does it take to board up one of the greatest and first convention centers in the country, yep. Board Walk Hall? Yep. But you take the boards and you board up the windows because we say, we're coming to the world. We say this, we are peaceful people. It's a shame if you looked up 
every one of those boards and windows, it spells out Black Lives Matter. Fannie Lou Hamer, the Come on. over there, 50 some years ago, she just spoke just like Ms. Carter, just like Ruth, just like everyone else said Black Lives Matter, right here. The torch has been passed and is still lit by all those who set it. And we will continue to strive for that. And because we said we're going to come here and it distracted a lot of people, we told some we're not going to take that. But we're not going to. Come. What we will do, we will join whoever's painting on Dr. Martin Luther King Avenue, Black Lives Matter, and show us. the same thing right now. Black Lives Matter. And as long as we have something in common, we have to commit after the press, after the press leaves. We have to commit to sit down and finding out what we have in common as black people and white people and the rich as well as the poor. To say, listen, there's plenty of room at this table. Come on now. Let that go. We talk about the Last Supper. Let's see how that Last Supper looked like. Let's get there. That supper of the forks, the knives where it's supposed to be, the napkin, and let's work together as a community. Now, if you're saying we don't have to sit the right black lives matter,